We are now going to create a histogram with our own bin values. Go back to the original site, sheet, sheet 1, which contains the raw data. Add a new column in column C called bins. As in the lecture, let's use bins of 5 million. So let's type in 0, 5 and 10. And we want to drag these down to the maximum value. Because we've made three already, Excel can populate out the existing the, the next cells using the difference between the two. And we can drag this down to 80, which is an appropriate bin size based on the maximum value of the data set. As so. We are now going to use the data analysis tab as with last week to create a histogram. If the data analysis tab is missing, use the guidance from last week or ask for help. So, we click on data, data analysis, and this time we scroll down to histogram. So for these, we want to make sure that the input range here matches all of the data selected in column A. The bin range maxes, matches all the data in column C, C2 to C18. We need to make sure we have an output range of somewhere like E1. And we're going to tick cumulative percentage and chart output. When you're done th with this, click OK. This produces an extra column with the frequency of guesses between each bin size and the cumulative percentage of these. And here we have the chart on the right hand side. As before, let's move the chart to a new sheet on its own. Call the new sheet what you want and answer the following questions. So we're going to move the chart, new sheet, let's just call it something like histo, and this becomes much more clearly. We can see the blue bars relating to the histogram with the y-axis on the left hand side and we can see the cumulative percentage graph with the y-axis on the right hand side. These have already been labelled appropriately, have been on the bottom as well. Now answer the following questions on a notepad or on a word document. What type of distribution can we see here? Hint, we covered this in the lecture as well. And now we use the cumulative percentage line to estimate the following values Q1, Q2, Q3 and interquartile range. Also estimate any mode or modes that may be present. If we go back to the raw data sheet again in sheet 1, the keen-eyed among you will have noticed that Excel offers the option to draw a histogram directly from the raw data. Try this out now using the following button. Make sure the data is selected, control, shift and down. We go to insert and this button in the middle, insert statistic chart. And let's click on histogram. You will notice that it auto selects bins and doesn't do a very go good job of representing the data set. It is for this reason I would always recommend using the method we just used. Let's delete this chart. Now let's use the same button, but this time select the box and whisker plot, again using the raw data. So make sure the data is selected on the left hand side, insert, statistical chart button in the middle, and a box and whisker plot. You should get something like this in the middle of the screen. This is yet to be labelled and annotated, but you should be able to do this yourself by now. From this we can work out the quartiles and the range. Do the values match up with your estimates from the cumulative percentage chart from earlier? Have a go. Remember, this bar in the middle refers to the median. We have Q1 at the bottom, Q3 at the top, and the extreme values are indicated by these whiskers. We can also stack box and whisker plots side by side or on top of each other. Let's now assess how normally distributed this UK population data is performing skewness and kurtosis analysis.